Hello guys, I analyzed two most recent reports on the state of Web2 corporations and brands that are entering the Web3 space and we're going to cover three most important things. First, which sectors and which companies are entering the Web3 now or entered earlier? Second, why do they do this now or why they did this earlier? And then third, what are the blockers for them for moving forward and approving initiatives on their end? These are three of the most important factors for me as a salesperson and you're watching Blockchain Business Builders. It's a channel for people that want to learn and want to act. It's uh, the only hub for Web3 BD knowledge and for Web3 uh, BD connections. So let's dive into it. Welcome. I didn't want to make this video too long. So the way it's going to work right now, I'm going to show you two reports and then the most important parts and points that I found out in these points and analyzed and then include all the links and descriptions so we can go and check out the reports on your own. So the first report is about brands in Web3 and Metaverse. So it's, the focus here is more on NFTs, collectibles, marketing, all of that stuff. So the most important uh, findings that I got here is that the 14 reasons why brands made Web3 moves in 2022, the reasons why they're joining, and believe me, it's, this has not changed in 2023, is because they want to deliver unique experience, engage customers, resurrect archived IP, and also advertisement. Honestly, I did not expect that deliver a unique experience to be the first. My idea was that the main driver and my main key takeaway is that they were going here enabling memberships and uh, relaunching different web free branches of businesses. But in fact, it's all about customers. So I think it's good. But the most important part here and analytics that, that I can give you is these are the selling points why they're entering. And also you have here the sectors divided by sectors, which sectors are going and joining. So you can see that like reward physical products for retail is like the most viable use case. But then for others, there are other reasons for joining. What you can do here, you can start crafting your marketing communications, your email, your cold outreach, your warm outreach. Uh, having these points in them and showing how your products or services help them achieve these goals. Second slide that we're going to move uh, towards for is slide 13. And slide 13 is a very nice illustration uh, which initiatives web brands are moving to. So you can see that in Q1 2023, they do metaverse, they do NFTs, and they do a bit of business, uh, Web3 business and infrastructure. And there's like a small percentage. So it's basically any initiative in, in 2023 is dominated by three use cases, NFT, metaverse, Web3 business of infrastructure. If you're not doing that, or if you're not selling that kind of um, services or products, that's probably going to be a problem for you. So moving forward, 17. 17 is a comparison between blockchains. Uh, also important to know because there is uh, the most important blockchain was Ethereum. Now it's Polygon actually in this year. And you can see that this year, there's actually four blockchains that dominate the whole space. There is Ethereum and Polygon, they're understandable. But then there's also Palm and Immutable. So Palm is a small blockchain by uh, consensus, and it's primarily for major web, web two brands, for different movies, for different art brands. So if you're like heavy focused on selling to brands, you should definitely check out, uh, you should definitely check out Palm. We at Morales, we have the Palm integration, and uh, I can say that ecosystem there is viable, but it requires some time to grow. And then there is also, Immutable X, if you're selling anything to games, you probably know about this blockchain, the most viable blockchain for any games. And any brand that's entering the space, they will probably go to Immutable uh, because they're, they're just known for focusing on games. Then um, here's the overview of the ecosystem. Uh, and you can see that 25 in 2022, last year. So 25% of brands launched with three projects were in retail sector. And 58% of these 72 brands are in the fashion industry. I wanted to show you this graph just because there is a very nice breakdown by uh, industries and by sectors. So you know, if you're looking into Zoom Info or Apollo or LinkedIn, you know how to filter out people. And don't worry about this. There is a list of companies down below. So I will send it to you. You don't need to think about mm, which companies you don't need to pick logos right now. And uh, the most important here is filters for your search system. So you know that in retail, there is fashion, luxury, household products, if you're selling to retail. So you know what, who to sell, who to look for, transport, sports, technology, all of that stuff. But I may warn you that the situation changes dramatically if we go to 2023 to the first quarter. This is, I mean, this is the first quarter. If you multiply it by four, probably the image is going to be uh, to look similar to the previous one. But you can see that the sports sector, for example, it just shrinked dramatically. And right now, the most viable are in retail, in media, and also in technology. You can see which companies are doing the most stuff in uh, Q, Q1 2023. And this means that, like, for me, I want to outreach them because I know that this is relevant for them. This, the Web3 projects is relevant for them. And I know that everyone, each one of these companies, they have a Web3 department or a Web3 person or a Web3 consultant that is working on Web3 initiatives. And I want to be in touch with this person. Maybe even not right now. Maybe there is nothing that we can do right now. But for the future, just for relation building and networking, this is the most important part that we guys can do, like as salespeople, right now in the bear market when they're not buying anything. We need to network because as I told 
told you in my previous video, by the way, check it out here. We are experimenting. All Web3 is whole experiment and you, you need to have fun here and don't worry like a lot about providing the value. So like, because right now there is not a lot of that we can do and networking is the most viable and proactive strategy on building connections and also winning the game in the next few months, in the next few years. Next. As I told you, there's going to be a list of all the brands that entered in 2022 and also a list of all brands that entered in 2023. What I'm going to do here after the video, I'm going to uh, turn this PDF into Word document and then copy all of these names and then just put them in my enrichment system and then scrape all the data for people that are working with free. And uh, this is going to be a list for me where I can go through, where I can look for different people, where I can start networking. And by the way, big kudos and shout out to NFT Tech. NFT Tech created this report and it was really in deep. I really enjoyed reading it. And I advise you, all of you, check out the report, check out their website and also look for what NFT Tech is doing. Now, we're going to move on to the next report. And the next report is not this one. Yeah, this one. The next report is made by Coinbase and it's about, it's very fresh. It's Q2 2023 report and they surveyed uh, people from Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 companies about their Web3 initiatives. You can see that this report is completely different from what we have seen in the previous one. It's a lot of facts, it's a lot of graphs, but don't worry, I analyzed everything and highlighted the most important and key findings that were important for me as a salesperson. So tech, financial services and retail three most viable sectors that were selling, buying, doing anything in Web3 in this quarter in Q2, because I'm uh, doing this in the end of uh, June of 2023. There is also important information here among the crypto blockchain aware Fortune 500 executives rate similar percentage blah, 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 uh, that they say that their competitors will boost investment in the next two years, like 60% say this, and then 57% say that their company is going to boost again investment in Web3 in the next two years. So if you are guys staying here for a long time like me, and I hope that everyone who's watching blockchain business builders is here for a long game uh, we have something to expect good in the future there's also uh, information that blockchain is the heart of corporate innovation so the data collection and management are two most viable use cases for large corporations and i'm going to cover this in depth later on and then also that 87 percent of surveyed fortune 500 executives say that rules and regulations are important to sustain so problem with the rules again right now in us for example um the hostile environment doesn't help any with adoption, right? Then the most important part here that I highlighted is um, drivers, why projects are joining and start doing anything in web. Again, this is from a corporate perspective and you can see how different this is from those NFTs, metaverse, marketing uh, <laughs> initiatives. They say that staying ahead of competition is significant motivation, 64%. Meeting consumers' expectations is only secondary concern, only 45%, like two, two of the reasons. Really what this means for me is they don't know what they're doing and why they're doing. Because if your main reason for doing web project is just because you want to stay ahead of your competition, it means that all of them, they're running to something Thing, what they don't know. They don't actually know why they need this, how they're going to use this. They just know, oh, company A is doing this. I'm going to be better in that. That's it. That's that's a bad sign for me, honestly. I don't I don't like this the, the way it goes. This, this again proves the theory and uh, that we are just experimenting here. Nobody actually knows why the hell they need Web3. They just know that they need Web3 because maybe sometimes in the future it's going to be useful for them, like a generative AI with open AI. Like it will be, but for us, what this means for us, for people that are selling and working in this industry right now is that we need to have very clear expectations that they are not, they don't know what they need. And this means that we as a salespeople, we need to educate them very hard. We need to show them. We need to handhold them through the whole experience and deliver the best experience in the industry. Next. 55% say that crypto and Web3, they enable efficiencies in their companies, which is good because they know that something can be improved. They also say that their own top sources for learning about these technologies are industry reports, 63%, industry events, 62%, and follow news coverage, 49%. If I was a marketer right now, I would start, you know, doing three industry reports per quarter, like very good in-depth reports, and going to every major Web3 event in the space because that's where the big fish are coming. We are talking about Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 companies. Imagine you are landing this kind of clients. That would be amazing for you, right? So if you're going to grow your business, if you want if you want to know where their eyeballs are, this is where they are in industry reports. So they're reading this report like me right now and like you right now. That's for sure on industry events and uh, on the news coverage. Then there's also the top 10 uh, Fortune 100 brands, just 10 companies that you can add to your sequences for relationship building, for selling something them, for educating them because I think it's worthwhile taking a look. These are the companies that are doing something. They're doing a lot of it and they're doing it recently. So this is the best data in the industry. And thanks very much to Coinbase for creating this kind of report. 
The next trend, uh, we're going to cover trends. Uh, this video is already too long, but I want to make it shorter. The trends in innovation are the blockchain infrastructure, data collection and management, payment settlements, supply chain management, and process automation smart contracts. So we are talking real business here. Uh, scale, capitalism, all of this stuff is uh, if you're selling Web3 and you are doing anything of this, that's amazing for you. If you're not doing something like this and you want to sell to this Web3 corporation, you, just, you need to know what they expect from you and what's going to be on their agenda right now. So it's all about infrastructure, okay? Then what we're going to talk about is... Um, so these were the crypt, uh, web free use cases, but if you don't have your, your use case here, if you're NFT, for example, there are still the most popular crypto use cases are tokenization, blockchain infrastructure again, crypto asset trading products, payment settlements, and followed by NFTs collectibles. So if we're talking about small crypto in the whole web free, that these are the most use cases, the most important use cases for you. And we're wrapping up. The most important part here is blockers. What kind of blockers these kind of companies have are lack of obvious return on investment, the most important blocker. They don't know, as I told you, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know if it's going to worth it. They don't know if this worth the budget. Uh, are they going to make it back? This is the biggest driver to do something. So it's, you know, it's bizarre. They know that they need to do something because everybody's doing, but they do not want to allocate resources there because they actually don't know what the hell this is. So this is the full experiment. They're also concerned about regulation eventually affecting the use case. It's a big thing. Like I didn't even think about this uh, and it's good because now I know what is the problem them. Our consumers isn't interested in the types of technology yet and lack of funding or other resources. So these are three biggest, four biggest uh, things that they don't, why they don't want to do any kind of web free integrations right now. If your web three products offers ser uh, services, if you do not cover majority of these objections or like at all in the ideal situation, you need to cover them all, then you're also going to have problem selling problem. Yeah. So what Coinbase is telling us to do? What are three ways out uh, of this situation? So the first way is uh, we can educate corporations on, and consumers about benefits of investments. Second thing, we can partner with developer communities and colleges to educate more skilled talent and keep innovation on shore. And the third, continue to push for regulatory clarity. So second and third is probably for what uh, big Web3 companies like Coinbase would do. We as sellers, the only thing that we can do is educating corporations, these people, these uh, Web3, people that manage Web3, people that manage Web3 projects, people that work in Web3 projects, developers, everyone, consumers who can benefit from investment because they all are touching the space. There's a lot of uncertainty. They need to be handholded and you need to be a light that is uh, taking them through the dark ages. If I would end this video in this quote. So my information here was uh, just an aggregation of everything you need to think about this again read this report download check out how they were conducted there is way more information here that i did not cover just for the sake of making the video more interesting for you guys and uh, besides that i would invite you to join our blockchain business builder community it's a community for web3bd that are conscious about what they're doing and they want to be effective we constantly connect on these kind of initiatives. We discuss them, we share common challenges, we have networking calls, we build a network and a community for people to strive and in this industry to develop them, to grow themselves, and we help each other to do this. So I highly advise you to apply. The link is in, in the first link below in the, in the description. And also read this report because this is the most important information that you would need to sell for Web2 projects in Q3 and probably in Q4. My name, my name is Nikolai and it was very nice to meet you here. Looking forward to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.